in today's video, I have some more Dollar Tree DIYs that I cannot wait to show you. Of course, they're farmhouse, so if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. To start off, we take nine of these candle mirrors from Dollar Tree, and they have these little uh, pieces at the bottom, I guess to keep from scratching like a table. So I just take my putty knife and they're really easy. They come off. I just kind of push my putty knife up underneath of them and then I take all of them off. I then clean the mirrors, which you can skip this part and do it. Um, before we put the wood on but I did just want to clean them off they had fingerprints and everything else next I take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and originally I was gonna leave some space on either side of the mirrors but I quickly realized that the wood would kind of be crooked so I did end up cutting it down to be flush with the mirrors. I did leave just a little bit of space in between. That way when we put the wood on, you can maximize your mirror space. And also to get nice clean lines, I did use this level from Dollar Tree. You guys, I'm always shocked at the items Dollar Tree has. Of course, they're not always the most amazing products, but some of the stuff they have, like I can't get over that it is a dollar and the level is one of them. So once I had it cut down all the way, then I did just take my a finger sander and I just sanded those edges. Yes, you can sand down a foam core board with no problems. I then just laid my mirrors back out and glued them down with some hot glue. Then I took my yardsticks that I had already sanded down or I should say my husband sanded them down for me and I made the frame. Now if you're not good at angles, you can just cut them square, but I tried to get a little fancy here. I'm not the best either, so I literally just held it up to them and then made pencil marks where I thought that it would be a corner. And then I took it to my saw, I put it on a 45 degree angle, and I just cut it as close to that line as possible. I did the exact same thing with the cross pieces. I just held those down and I marked with my pencil. I held them down the um, outer frame with my clamps. That way when I measure the middle pieces, then it would be nice and even. So once I had all my pieces cut, you can cut these with a hand saw. You don't need a electric saw. They do come in handy and it cuts down on your time. Plus it helps your wrists because I think that would be a lot of sawing. But I don't know if you guys know this. If you take your measurements to Home Depot, my Home Depot will cut stuff for me. It doesn't matter what it is. And most of the guys in the, the lumber yard are always really helpful and like they know what they're doing so if you wanted to do this project and you just don't know how to cut stuff you can always take the measurements to them and they will cut it down for you next i take my frame and i i forgot to mention that when i pulled this off i did label all the back pieces that way i knew exactly where they went and then i took my frame and i glued it together in the corners with some wood glue i did it this way that way once we put it down on our mirrors we don't have to fuss with it to get it even i then take my white waverly chalk paint and i give it um, the frame and the middle pieces, just a light coating of dry brushing. Next, I lay my frame down and all the middle pieces before gluing anything. I then glue down the cross pieces first that go towards the right and I just kind of use my hammer to make sure that they fit in nicely. I wanted this to be nice and tight, so I think that when I glued it together, it made it shrink just a little bit, which wasn't a big deal. I just tapped it right in and it went right in. And then when I glued, I just put a bead of hot glue 
in between or like on the edge of the mirror but you have to work fast because whenever you're hot gluing on like a mirror or glass the hot glue dries really really fast so you do have to work quickly I then just glued all the rest of the pieces and I took some square dowel rods I measured the uh, back piece around the mirrors and the foam board because I just wanted a more finished look if you were hanging this and looking at it from the side. I then just glued those down with some hot glue and I also had this farmhouse handle or cup handle so I did paint it white and then dry brush it with some of my antique wax. So I was going to screw this but it did um it would have went through the glass which would have shattered it so i did just take some hot glue and i glued that down last but not least i took a little screw and i screwed it to the top of this that way i could hang a wreath you can switch your wreath out for different holidays or you could just leave it plain it's totally up to you actually i lied the last uh Part that I did was I took these little corner brackets I painted them white and then again I couldn't screw them in because it would have went into the glass so because it's just for decorative purposes I did just take some hot glue glued them down and then of course I distressed with my antique wax So this is the part in the project where I'm just looking at this and I cannot believe that I made this from mostly Dollar Tree products. You guys, usually I would use wooden rollers from Dollar Tree, but my Dollar Tree never ever has them. So if your Dollar Tree does, then I would use those if you can't get your hands on yardsticks. But you guys, look how amazing this looks. Let me know in the comments down below what you think per usual. And because this was a mirror, you could kind of see everything in the back when I was trying to take pictures. But it is what it is. So anyway, if you guys are new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button. And then if you want to be notified every single time I upload, just tap that little bell and then all and you'll be notified when I upload. Okay guys, moving on to our next project, I take these longer wooden planks from Dollar Tree and four large stir sticks. I cut the handles off of them and then I paint everything white. Once I had everything painted white, then I kind of lay it out and I kind of figure out how like wide I want it. Now, so um, I did want to mention that previously I made these when I had like 10 subscribers probably. So I made it back in the day. The video was terrible. Looking back on that video, it's amazing how far that I have come. So I did want to recreate them and make them into a shelf. So I just lay out my large um, stir sticks and then I glue the plank pieces to the top and the bottom. For the second one, I literally lay the um, stir sticks on top of it and then glue the first part down. That way I can have them perfectly even. I then just laid out about 40 large popsicle sticks and I gave them a light coating of some white Waverly chalk paint. I wasn't too worried about the wood showing through because it gives it kind of like a reversed um, distressing and then once they were all dry I flipped my shutter around and I glued them down on an angle. So I did want to mention that the easiest way I found to do this was to take your first popsicle stick and lean it up on that longer wooden plank from Dollar Tree and then the rest of your popsicle sticks should kind of be on an angle. It doesn't um, come out perfectly so 
I did just take a few popsicle sticks, I cut them down in four or five pieces, and then I cut those in half. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide those little pieces in between the slats just so that way they can be on an angle just a little bit more. So I just glue them down right like as I go. Eventually I just glued all the popsicle sticks down and then I go back in with the little pieces but you just want to slide them in just enough so that way it lifts it up but not so much that you can see it from the front so I do just slide it through and then I check in the front to make sure that it's not um, it's not popping out so much that you can see it and then I just glue them all like I said and continue all the way down to the bottom on both of them. Now to make the shelves at the bottom of these shutters I take small stir sticks and you guys I get a bunch of packs at a time because I get them from Home Depot. Now granted we're there all the time because my husband owns a business and he always needs stuff from Home Depot but I like to have them just in case. So the yardsticks are a dollar, the small packs of stir sticks are a dollar, and the large pack of stir sticks are a dollar. And I also get my large popsicle sticks there as well because 30 come in a pack for once again a dollar. So I just cut the handles off of all of them in the pack and then I lay four down and I glue them down with a half of popsicle stick on each side. I then grabbed two dowel rods that I got from Dollar Tree and I gave them all a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint and again I mean um, like a light coat of paint that way some of the, sh the, some of the wood shows through rather than give it a thick coat. Good lord guys, you know I can't talk. Here we go. <laughs> once I have them all painted, then I do just go in once again with my antique wax and I distress all the pieces. Once I distressed the bottom shelves and the dowels and then I go ahead and I distress the shutter itself. So I start on the top and bottom edges and then literally I just take my brush and I go all the way around the edges and then I dry brush in between and I also dry brush the little slats in the middle. I don't know why but watching this back is just so satisfying. Of course I sped it up but I don't know I just loved watching it when I edit it down and it just looks so cool watching it come together. Next I take some hot glue and I glue down the dowel rods in the middle of both of the shutters. I then stand the shutter on top of the shelf just to kind of get a gauge how long I want my chain and then I take some C hooks that I got. I believe I got these at Walmart in a big pack. I did just use the white ones. There were a few different finishes of the C hooks so I did use the white ones and I had already put two on either side of the edges of the shelves and then I kind of laid laid down the shelf at the bottom of my shutter and I kind of just went up the line to make sure that I had it even if that makes any sense and then I put in the C hooks on either side now because these uh, stir sticks are pretty thin the back of the C or the screw part of the C hook did come through so I did just take my wire cutters and I just snipped off the ends that way when it's hanging you can't see that screw part. 
I then took my antique wax once again and just distressed those hooks just so that way they didn't look out of place or weird without being uh, painted or dry brushed and then we're going to glue the bottom shelf to the shutter. What I did for that is I just took some wood glue and I put wood glue on either side where the large stir sticks were and then I put a dab of wood glue and then left a space, a dab of wood glue and then left another space. That way I could put hot glue in between those so that way the wood glue will hold over time and the hot glue will hold it immediately. So I knew that I needed to reinforce this that way the bottom shelf um, wouldn't fall off or whatever the case may be. So I definitely did just want to ensure that this would stay together. So all I did was flip it around to the back and then I took some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and I just reinforced those sides. So I just put a dab of hot glue on the bottom and on the back of the large stir stick on either side and then I stuck my Jenga block right there again that way it will give it some stability next i take some chains from dollar tree these are in the garden section and i actually just took them off of another project so all together i had seven links I left five pointing downward and then I disconnected two and then I just flipped them the other way. That way it will hold the C hook nicely. Now for me, this is just decorative purpose, decorative purposes. I'm sure that if like the bottom was to fall, then maybe this would hold it up. However, when I thought of this idea, I did just want it for the decorative purpose like I said. Next I take some white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brushed on it just to kind of blend it in because this piece is white and brown I thought that the black kind of looked funny so I did just want to kind of blend those chains in and then literally you guys that was it. I cannot believe how amazing these turned out. They hold really well. I mean, they're not going to hold like a whole ton, but they did hold those little vases and this other decorative piece that I'm getting ready to show you how to make. So I was pretty happy with that. If you guys want to win this farm charm sign that I made in a previous project, go to All Things Crafty VIP on Facebook, answer all the questions, and join the group. And then I will put up a post and you can comment at the bottom of or in the comment section of that post. Also wanted to take a moment to thank Missy, Lisa, Candace, and Jill for buying me a coffee. If you enjoy my work and you would like to buy me a coffee as well, the link is in the description box. So moving on to these little arch pieces. I did have to order them online thanks to my friend Robin. She showed me how cute they were and I knew that I had to have them so I did order a box and if you join my VIP group I will be doing a giveaway of these over there so definitely go over and check that out. But I did just paint those little middle pieces. I took them off of the middle and then I had a sheet of burlap so I did just hold the pieces up. I cut out two pieces one for each and then you guys I found this disappearing purple glue stick spray and I wanted to test it out it is absolutely amazing I got it from Dollar Tree and I am so impressed I sprayed it on there and then as soon as I put this burlap on there it literally would not move like I said I was so impressed so definitely pick some up it's in the school section Next, I took my antique wax once again and I just just I just distressed both pieces. I then just took some hot glue and I glued them right back to the middle where they were. Once I glued them down, then I took my mini transfers from Chalk Couture. I cut out the one that I wanted, which I chose 
home sweet farm and I just took my black paste and I transferred that on now unfortunately these are out of stock as well as the other transfer I'm gonna use I didn't realize that they were out of stock before I used them so as soon as I or as soon as they come back in stock if you guys are interested in them just let me know and I'll let you know as soon as they come back in stock so using Chalk Couture is so, so easy. That is why I love it so much. You don't have to worry about weeding and everything that comes along with having a Cricut, like designing it on the computer, and then you have to hook up the machine and use a mat and et cetera, et cetera. So to me, just cutting it off or sometimes transfers are just a whole sheet. Laying it down on your project, chalking on it, rinsing it, or I should say rinsing your transfer, boom, you're done. That is why I love it so much. If you guys want any more information on it, just check the description box, shoot me an email, or you can message me on Facebook. No, I distressed the edges of those little burlap pieces and then I literally just took a few pieces of greenery that I cut off a pick I glued that to the top and then I made two simple bows and I just glued that to the top of the greenery as well look how quick and easy this project probably took me about 20 minutes to make and it is absolutely gorgeous especially with all the other projects of course, per usual, let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite, but every week, you guys, I can never, ever decide. So moving on to the last project, I take two beware signs and I glue them together right in the seam with some hot glue and some large popsicle sticks. I then flip my sign over. I take some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and my putty knife and I just go in and I spackle those holes. I then once again give the sign a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint and then I pull out my general transfer from Chalk Couture once again. Like I said, this one is also out of stock, so just let me know if you want me to let you know when it comes back in stock. And for bigger transfers like this, um, you want to peel it off of the backer with the sticky side up, and then take your towel or your fuzzing cloth and I fuzz it that way. For Chalk Couture, you want to fuzz the sticky side. That way, once you lay it down, it still will transfer nicely, but when you go to pull it up, it will pull up much easier. So I then stick my transfer down in the middle where I want it. I just put some black paste all over the place, and then I take my large squeegee, and I just squeegee all of that off. That's another beautiful thing about Chalk Couture is you don't waste any product. You just squeegee it off and then you put the excess right back into the jar. Now this, I, I wasn't worried about getting it perfect because I am going to distress this like a lot. I kind of wanted it like that coffee stained, grungy, old looking sign that is an antique and like when I go to yard sales, I've seen some signs that are just so old that they look like they were from like the 1920s and that's the look I was going for. So I did take my 
distressing ink and a blender brush and I just went all around the sign wherever that I saw fit and then I took my antique wax once again and I just went over the edges and on the parts that I thought needed it as well. That's what I love about Chalk Couture. Another thing, there's so many things you guys, I could go on for days, but I'm not going to bore you, but literally that quick to get such a high-end looking sign that you would get from say Kirkland's or somewhere where you would spend a gazillion dollars on something like that. And I don't know about you, but I am too cheap to be buying signs that are a lot of money. So anyway, that is it for this video, you guys, per usual. And I probably sound like a broken record, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and which project was your favorite. If you're still around, leave a heart in the comment section. I know that a lot of you guys can't leave a heart, so I love the messages that just say, I can't leave a heart, but I'm still here, so I appreciate you guys so, so much. If nobody has told you today, you are worthy, you are absolutely stunning, and I love you with all my heart and soul. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if, you'd enjoy, if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already and share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it because those shares and those thumbs up really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. So with all that being said, don't forget to join the VIP group on Facebook if you'd like and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!